Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at the extension Trimble Connect Visualizer. All right, for those of you who've been around a while, this is different from the visualizer that was like a super quick renderer that was available, I don't know, six, seven years ago. So I think it just came down not too long ago, but it's different. It has the same name, a little nostalgia there, I don't know but it is actually a quick render that is available from Trimble. So it is the visualization tool that is actually present inside Trimble Connect. So if you've ever used Trimble Connect, upload your model and visualize it or, or, or looked at it inside of Trimble Connect, this, this will look familiar. Uh, but it is available as a standalone extension now and you can download it for free. I'm gonna talk about that right now. All right, so here it is on Extension Warehouse. I just looked up Visualizer. This came up, Trimble Connect Visualizer. I'm looking at the Mac version. Very similar listing page to the, the Windows one, uh, but super simple, super basic. Uh, like it says here, allows you to create 3D renderings in your models. Awesome. Um, all you have to do is come in and bring this up and install it, and that's about it. It is very simple, very easy, it is free. So I do recommend going and grabbing it. Uh, even if you don't use it a whole lot, uh, it is kind of a quick and easy way to get a quick render of a model. So I have this just little house model and we're gonna just go ahead and do some rendering on it just to see how it works. Once you install it, it's gonna show up under extensions right here under Trimble Connect Visualizer. So go ahead and click on that. Uh, it's gonna export the model. So it takes the geometry and then opens it up in the visualizer, which will open in a new window. So this is it, I mean, at this point, I actually have a render. Some things to note in here is this is grabbing my model. Like I said, like you just saw, it's exporting. So it's looking at it in a different tool right here. So that does mean some things. It means my face me trees that I have here that are always gonna point towards the camera aren't necessarily gonna do that when they get in here. Once they come in here, they are just cardboard cutouts. So not a bad thing, especially if you're already in the view you want to use, but uh, yeah, that's something to note that if you do have face me's and you rely on face me's for visualization, you want to make sure that you are going from the view you want. You can move around inside a visualizer similar to the way you can move around inside SketchUp, but some buttons are different. So right here, as I spin around in 3D, I'm actually using my left mouse button right here. It's not the middle wheel. I can scroll the middle wheel up and down to zoom in and out, but if I want to orbit, I use the left mouse button. Getting the right mouse button and dragging will actually, let me do this kind of pan thing here. All right, so in some cases, this view might be all I need. Maybe I'm done. And that's Visualizer, good night. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the functionality we have as far as fine tuning this view. So we do have some UI over on the left side, there's a handful of buttons. There's a couple at the bottom too. I'll start at the very, very bottom. I have this little disappear. Uh, button, I don't know, it's magic. It gets rid of the UI, the UI being this one little thin strip, you can collapse it by hitting that, that's the button, the collapse, that's what I meant to say. Um, above that, we do have the export, or I'm sorry, this is the animation button. So the animation button lets me actually go in and create an animation. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty simple, we'll do that in a second. Uh, and then I have this shortcut to get me back to that that front view. If I get lost, so I you know I end up inside of a wall or something like that, you can hit this kind of reset view button to take you back to where where you're just looking right at the front of the model. All right, let's go through the these are the big ones. Let's go through here, top to bottom. So we'll start, excuse me, by opening up our sunlight or daylight uh, adjustment tool. So I have here the option of this kind of I don't know murky lawnmower man looking background where I just kind of see, yeah, there's a sky and there's a ground plane, but it's all kind of way in the background. Or I can just flip to like dark gray nothingness. So those are my options there for the background. But the real important part here is these sliders right here. So I have a couple different, couple different sliders. The first one is the skybox. Where did my little button go? There it is. Tiny UI. So here, this is actually moving around where the sun's hitting. So I'm kind of spinning it around in, in 3D. So if I get a little more here's over the side, so my, my shadow's hitting at the side here. And then this one right here is actually the height of the sun. 
one of the things I really love about the way this works is as I come down like to where it's going to sun where the sun's going to set look at how the, the hue changes it gets warmer like the sun's at the end shine through extra atmosphere and I get this kind of orangey glow that is so cool uh, in the morning end up much cooler and then it warms up throughout the day and then as the sun's setting it turns this orange color I just think that's pretty pretty neat but yeah this lets me so this lets me set how high the sun is and then this is, lets me kind of turn and see where's the sun going to hit it so I'll, I'll need some shadows on here something like that I also have the ability to rotate the whole the box on the outside unfortunately mine's uniform all the way around which is in the default one here so spinning it doesn't make any difference it looks the same below that I do have the ability to take a picture so when I get my my picture or my look exactly like I need it I can just hit that button and then it's going to save that image where does it save it he asked leadingly well in this folder right here so I can pull up this folder and I can actually see where those images are that I saved all right keep working our way down here um, this button right here is actually the full screen toggle so you can toggle to get rid of the UI at the top and then I have two options here that'll help me fine tune my actual imagery. If I click this button right here, I have the ability to create materials. So we can actually create a single material and apply it to the whole model. Um, this is useful if I want to do something like a clay model or something like that. I want to come up with a specific material and I want to set the values for the glossiness, the reflectivity, that kind of thing, and apply it to the whole thing. Really cool way for, to look at conceptual models and masses. Uh, but for something like this where I already have materials on here from SketchUp, this will let me dump one material on the whole thing. It's not really what I want, but it is available to you again if that's how you want to view something. The little slider button right here is going to pull up all, this is the good stuff. This is the juicy stuff uh, because what I can do with this is I can actually come in and I can just make severe changes to uh, how I want to view this. So I have everything here. How bright is the sun? How strong are the shadows? Um, how sharp are the shadows? That's pretty cool. So I can come up with real blurry or really sharp shadows. See, that's so I can actually see the edges, see the lines there. And then I have some options for ambient occlusion. So that's kind of, the ambient occlusion is kind of like these shadows that get, like right here is a perfect example of an ambient occlusion where I have the reflections of the materials or the shadows off of the corners kind of coming together. All of that is editable. So all of that can be put in there. The other thing I really think is cool is if I, I'm gonna zoom in here a little further, is well and there's a lot of cool things i'm just touching you know you guys know how i do this video here's a couple of cool things now go try it yourself that's exactly how this is going to end spoiler but here i have this depth of field focus what this lets me do is actually like push back how, where i want to start seeing focus so right there i got the front in focus and the back is still blurry back here really cool and then aperture same thing i can set how close i want that that aperture to be for the for so i can blur out part of it. Obviously this is a house, not like if I had a neighborhood, it'd make more sense to put more in the blur, but very cool. So yeah, so I'd like some camera functionality here, bloom, white balance, shutter, uh, and then just some color things, saturation, exposure, brightness. Very cool way to, to customize your view so that you can actually come up with like a unique model here or a unique look at your model. And it all happens real time. So I'm not out to like bake this and I have to send it off to the rendering farm or anything like that. I can do it real life as I'm going through there and uh, a very, very cool way to view. Um, so yeah, again, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. It is a free extension. It's available for, available for both Windows and Mac. So I recommend if you're using SketchUp 2023 that you download it and give it a try. Worst case, I've wasted minutes of your life, but if you're at this point in the video, you're probably somewhat committed and interested, so I would suggest giving it a shot. It is one of those extensions that it's just, it's just easy to use. You can just hop in and start on it right away. You don't need to like invest a whole lot of time and energy, and it is just super simple. I mean, you can get a render out of it. That is, it's not, not photorealistic rendering. We're not talking about V-Ray. There's not, you know, it's not bouncing light particles or anything like that. And I'm not gonna, I can't put extra lights in anything like that. But for what it does, which is a simple sunlight model, it is so easy, so quick, and it does a great job. It gives you a lot of control with the sliders and the pieces that it creates. So give it a try. 
And if you like this video, go ahead and click like down below, maybe share it with somebody, something like that. And if you don't already, you should probably subscribe because if you watch this much of a video, you've got some interest in SketchUp and you should probably be getting notified when we come out with new videos. But in the comments, let me know down below if you've tried this. If there's another renderer you like, let me know about that too. I like making these videos a lot, but even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.